Hey you guys, this is Enrico and I am back again. Hope you guys are doing well. Happy New Year. It will be a happy new year by the time you see this video. I've been going through the notions. Got food poisoning during Christmas. Then after that, or really during that, my camera broke. So I was just like, you know, I'm just gonna take a break from YouTube and find a new camera. It was so hard to find a camera. And then I finally found one, so. On a sour note in a way, we're talking about Japan and crime that never really happens, but when it happens, it seems like the people go big or they go home. It's been this case that actually happened on Sunday, the 25th of this month, and it was a triple murder. The victims were found outside of their home, sprawled around in their yard. And there were witnesses to this murder. And at first there was a suspect and the Japanese police said, you know what, we're just gonna run and we're going to get this person. But then they raided this man's house and they found DNA evidence and the object used so they say you know what no we're gonna trump this one up to murder it was you know suspicion of attempted murder and it went up to just murder because there were witnesses and they also went and they checked the security footage you know how japan and korea they love to have security cameras and it's really good that they did because this murder took place in saitoma and it's in a prefecture called hano I believe I'm saying this correctly. And it's a prefecture that is very much like quiet, has this kind of old feudal Japanese feel about it, but then it's also mixed with this modern artsy flair that I feel like really fits the overall area and this neighborhood or just regular Japanese houses two stories they're not far apart from each other so it's very easy for someone to look out their window and see what is going on down in their neighbor's yard and that's exactly what happened on the 25th of I'm saying this month because this is when I'm filming this video obviously it's December and what happened was this family got together for Christmas. Their daughter had to come in. She works at an ad agency. She came in from Tokyo to visit her parents. This is a big profile case because they're digging into the main man that was murdered and his name is William Bishop. He, they say that he, has done a lot in Japan. He's been going back and forth from Japan and other parts of Asia since the 70s. They're saying that he opened up his own healthcare firm and he knew a lot about Japan's healthcare and he really was passionate about helping people. But then there, I also heard from what I was digging into, the neighbors said that he's also an author. So they were saying that he wrote books and he spoke Japanese to a certain level, but he still had kind of like a foreign intonation in the way that he spoke Japanese. When the neighbors would run across him and his wife, they were very greeting, you know, they, they, they just greeted them like normal. They, they greeted them, they said they were warm to them and they went on about their way like any other person in Japan, you speak, you keep on going. <laughs> so it was shocking to everyone that this murder happened in this peaceful neighborhood. What wasn't shocking to people though was that the murderer, Jun Saito, actually was involved because he had been harassing this family and there were six different cases that were actually recorded. However, the police, after William reported that this man had vandalized their family car and slashed their car up, they took 
Saito in, but they had no clear evidence that he had done it. So what they did was they let him go. And that was a year ago. So you can imagine now the police going back to the same residence and they're finding William with trauma to his body and his head laying in the yard. His wife, she was 68 years old. He was 69, laying sprawled out in the yard. And then their daughter, only 32 years old, whole life ahead of her, still young, laying in the doorway of the home. They found that each body had some type of bruising to the head, to the back. William died of a spinal injury. They said it was blunt force just hitting him in his back. And then what, what really makes me think too is that all of the bodies were found with no shoes on. You know, Japanese culture, they believe in not wearing shoes in the home or either if they wear shoes, it's, you know, outside shoes and then slippers or inside shoes. So that means that was there a way that the murderer got inside of the home? It's kind of chilling to think about and attacked this family. And then the neighbors, they gave their testimonies, their, their witness accounts. And they said that we saw a man in a black mask holding this long black stick, chasing after a woman in the yard. And then they said that Later on, maybe about a half an hour or so later, they started to smell smoke. And they looked in on the second floor of the home. There was a fire that had started. So these bodies are laying out in the yard. And there's a fire on the second floor. And the police, they went and they, you know, put the dots together they traced his tracks. <laughs> they found the kerosene. They found the hammer and the stick. And they arrested Jun Saito, age 40. And they wanted to know, you know, why have you been harassing this family for over a year? What made you get to the boiling point that you would kill them in cold blood and what was his answer you asked it was i don't want to discuss it i don't want to talk about it so now as i make this video and as i speak people are still trying to make the connection of what happened why did he do this what was the big point or idea I have theories. I think the biggest one that comes to my head, and I think many people would think this too, is was it a hate crime as far as international couples go? Because, you know, William was an American man. I believe he's from South Dakota, correct me if I'm wrong. He married a Japanese woman, they had a daughter. Many people in the neighborhood knew him. They knew him from Googling his name. He was very accomplished in many different fields. And to see this white man happy with a Japanese woman with a pretty daughter, I don't know if that set him off to think, you know, well, you're doing something to our culture. And it is sad, it's not just Japanese people. There are people in this world who feel that way, who don't see people as just human beings. They think that if they see an interracial couple that somehow that's threatening to their race. And I think it's so weird, it's strange, because a human being is a human being. 
Like even if you don't agree with people's unions and what they do with their lives, it, it should be no concern of yours because if you have these ideals, then put those ideals on your life, not on anyone else's. You live your life, they live their life. But if this was the case, it's so unfortunate that he went as far as feeling like that this man who's accomplished so much and this woman who was just living her life, she found someone who just happened to be a white man and they were living quietly, had a daughter, they were getting ready for Christmas, feeling that he had to go through putting on a mask, getting weapons, and bludgeoning them to death outside of their home, chasing them down at that. But there are many different theories. There could be a theory too that he's just not right in the head. And then maybe he saw this old couple and it clicked something for him, maybe going back to his family life. Even though the neighbors said that he stayed to himself and that he was a good student. You know, you hear this a lot where people especially like Japanese culture, they're like, well, we, we didn't see this coming from this person. It's, it's out of left field. And all of a sudden, you see them on TV being arrested. And it's like, but you never know how people really feel deep down inside and in the deep crevices of their hearts. So it could be just a mental thing. You know, I really couldn't say if it's something that set him off to make him feel this way. <laughs> I'm leaning more toward the interracial hate crime. I think a lot of people probably are thinking that <laughs> in the back of their head as well. It could be maybe they were at the wrong place at the wrong time. He chose them and took the aggression out on them. And maybe it has nothing to do with really them. But then that wouldn't make sense because this really has been going on for a year. And it also goes to show that the police once again drops the ball. It's not good when the warning signs are there and then it ends in tragedy like this. Because this could have been prevented had the police kept a closer eye on this man. Especially when he has been harassing this family. This isn't something that just started. Now, if this was something that just came from the sky out of nowhere, I could understand. But they dropped the charges that William Bishop had actually placed on this man because he kept vandalizing their car and places near their home. So what gives? You know, either he's mentally unstable or he did see, you know, the color of this couple's skin and thought that it was wrong and he felt the need to get rid of them. It could also be that maybe William and this man had an exchange of words and he wasn't too happy with what was said. Maybe there was a grudge there from some type of connection. It is something that I would be interested in knowing about because I feel like there's more to this story or it could be that I solved it and what I've just said to you guys. But I do believe that there is something there because he wouldn't just keep at this family for a year and then come to this point unless he was crazy. So it's a lot to really sit and think about and think about all the evidence that we have here and what it boils down to. And I think the police right now is also really trying to crack this nut. Need to be trying to see, you know, what made you do this? They're going to try to crack him because he's not trying to talk. And they want him to talk. They want to know why did he do this? I mean, either way, he's going to be punished. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that one. 
he did it. They know he did it. Condolences to Mr. Bishop's family, to his wife's family. I know this is hard. You know, to have a loved one who you think is safe and living a peaceful life and to find out that they were brutally murdered. And, and you don't even know why. The world we live in, you guys. Be safe out here. Be safe in the new year. Watch around you. And if you run across warning signs and situations, please heed them. Please tell someone. Please take it seriously because a lot of people don't pay attention to warning signs and then what ends up happening is they end up in the ground dead and the family is crying and wondering what went wrong but the warning signs were there so this is a lot to think about you guys follow my social media mostly my instagram also my blog on east asian pop culture the link is always down in the description box below and remember, be real, stay real, live in the real, and I will always be back. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. Happy New Year. Hope you had a Merry Christmas, and I will see you in the next video.